Hey guys, it's Vanessa from The Garden, and today I'm going to show you how to grow your own sweet potatoes from grocery store sweet potatoes by making your own slips in a few different ways. If you find this video helpful, please smash that like and subscribe button. Now let's get to learning. This is a sweet potato slip, and this is the vine that comes out of a sweet potato that pretty much sprouts towards the end of its life, maybe in the bottom of your pantry. After this is left in water for a little while, a little bit of light and a little bit of nutrients start to develop your very own root system. This is one singular sweet potato slip, and this will actually produce six to eight sweet potatoes for you once it's placed in the soil. Let's go pick out some sweet potatoes from the store. So we're at the grocery store and we're getting sweet potatoes so that we can make our own sweet potato slips. And I'm lucky I have a Whole Foods near me, so uh, this is my variety of sweet potato. Garnet yams I already have at home, and I'm growing my own slips. But Japanese sweet potatoes are some of our favorite. They're white on the inside and very starchy, so they can be done savory really well. There's the different kinds that they have. They have four right now. I actually never had the Hannah sweet potato, so I got one to eat and then one for starting slips. And then I'm not a big fan of purple sweet potatoes, but I'm gonna grow the slips anyways. So we'll see. So it's been a couple weeks and I accidentally left the Hannah sweet potato in my pantry. So I'm just now adding it into sweet potato slip starting setup. But I have my other two sweet potatoes here. This is the Japanese sweet potato, purple skin on the outside and white skin on the inside. And this is the purple skin sweet potato with purple flesh on the inside. These sweet potatoes are just laying in a sterile seed starting soil mix. And I'm watering them pretty much every other day or when I water my seedlings. And I've started fertilizing my seedlings. So they're getting a little bit of fertilizer as well. You can see the Japanese sweet potato with the white flesh on the inside is actually growing slip a lot faster. In fact, its roots are so extensive that it's hard for me to completely pull it off of the soil in the tray. Soon I'll be able to remove this slip and place it in a cup of water so it can grow its own root system. So I've got the tray of the sweet potato sitting on a heat mat and that heat mat is on for 24 hours a day, but I have the cheapest grow light known to man from Amazon sitting up top and zip tied to my rack. And that is actually on a timer that matches my other grow lights that are in the area. I find this is the most hands-off way of starting sweet potato slips by just placing your sweet potatoes in warm soil and having some type of grow light or sunlight to trigger them to actually produce slips. I also will use this method to grow sweet potato slips outside once my temperatures are warm enough after my last frost date. I'll simply take my sweet potato and literally place it lengthwise in the soil just like you saw here in my seed starting mix in my grow room. And that will trigger its own slip and those slips will have their own roots. So instead of feeling like you need to pop off the slips and actually put those in a solution or water under grow lights to extend their life until it's warm enough outside, after that frost date, if you're able to get slips to grow outside on a sweet potato, you can simply pop them off the sweet potato and plant them in another spot in your garden and you're ready to go. So why do I start my sweet potato slips inside? Why mess with it if I could just as easily wait till after my frost date and put a sweet potato halfway in the soil and let it grow its own slips and be a little more hands off than what I've just shown you? Well, I like to start my sweet potato slips inside so that I can move those slips into the dirt as soon as it's warm enough because sweet potatoes take almost 100 to 120 days to actually form the tubers. So starting your sweet potato slips ahead of time can let you get a harvest mid to late summer and then I will start another round of sweet potato slips as a succession sowing that is then harvested about six weeks before Thanksgiving so then I have about six weeks to cure my sweet potatoes so that they get nice and sweet for Thanksgiving dinner. Now there are other ways to start sweet potato slips and I'm going to show you the ways that I'm doing it in my windowsill in my kitchen using my garnet yam harvest from last year because they went ahead and started sprouting on their own but now I'm fostering them to grow larger, bigger slips for me to be able to actually keep propagating them because I made a little propagation station for them because they were very tiny when I actually popped them off the sweet potatoes. I just put these in a couple days ago. We're just starting to see maybe a little root action coming down. Um, you really kind of want to keep a little bit of an air space, as you can see here, air space between the water and here just so things don't rot out. But I'm going to hit this with a little fish fertilizer and I'm sure that the roots will start to grow more. But since popping these sweet potato slips off of these sweet potatoes that are here, these have doubled in size. This is the size that they were when I put them in. So not very big and like this, you can compare. So they're already really happy and your sweet potatoes can just keep going and going and going until once again, they're used up. So you can see that there are roots forming here at the base of the sweet potato, very much so mimicking what I have going on in the grow room with that other sweet potato. It just depends on where it was harvested. You can kind of see more of where it was harvested. So if you want to grow sweet potatoes, this is an easy comprehensive way of growing sweet potato slips to eventually grow your own sweet potatoes from 
any grocery store sweet potato, even if it's not an organic one. You can grow them in larger containers and you can grow them just directly in a garden bed. They do vine out a lot and they behave really well in the deep heat of the summer. You can neglect them a little bit, so they are one of my favorite calorie crops to grow here in Texas. Starting your slips now or starting them at least six to eight weeks before your last frost day is really the standard for when to start sweet potato slips, no matter where you live. If you're in a climate where the temperatures from your last average frost date and the temperatures going into your warmer months actually increase pretty quickly, you can be ready to put those slips in the ground pretty soon after your last average frost date. If you find that you're in an area where you have a long enough growing season to get over 100 to 120 days of warm weather, but you feel like it stays pretty cold after your last frost date, because the sweet potatoes need that warmth, you wanna give them an extra few weeks until that soil temperature on average is around 45 to 50 degrees. I always make sure that I have enough slips to share with any of my garden friends or any new garden people that I meet. So if you have a new garden friend that wants to learn how to start their own sweet potato slips or how to grow their own sweet potatoes, send them this video and ask me any questions in the comments if you have them. That's it for this video on starting your very own sweet potato slips from grocery store sweet potatoes. And remember, if you never grow, you'll never know.